Have you ever felt like you were called to do something, like you were meant to do something wonderful, you're meant to do something great? Or maybe you just felt like you're meant to do something better than what you're doing now. Maybe you don't like your job, maybe you don't like your company, maybe you don't like your boss, maybe you don't like the industry that you're working in. And so you have this sense that you are called to do something greater, called to do something more. And maybe you know what that something is, or maybe you don't. Perhaps you've had some goals or dreams, things that you wanted to do, and they just haven't come to fruition yet. Maybe you continue to have setbacks, reversals. Something happens to your car, your house, your relationships, your dog, your kids, your health, whatever it might be. Things just continue to happen to impede you or to slow you down and apparently prevents you from doing what you believe you're meant to do, doing what you believe you're called to do. Well, what I want to do in this series is to share with you seven lessons from the life of Joseph that will inspire you, that will instruct you, that will help you to see what's happening in your life from a different perspective perspective that will motivate you and move you forward despite the things that may be happening to you. Now, many of you might know me as Michael Williams, the speech coach, um, and I specifically work with people who stutter, or as I like to say, get stuck. And what I've discovered is that one of the most important factors in improving your speech, that is if you're a person who stutters or if you know someone who stutters or has a severe fear of public speaking, then you know that, that this lacking in communication skills, that is the ability to speak in public or to speak well on the phone or whatever it might be, that this lack can slow someone down in their career or in getting the jobs they want or getting promotions or it can cause someone to uh, miss opportunities or not accept opportunities because they say, oh, I think I'm going to have to speak or give presentations here. It can cause one to organize their entire life around their inability to speak well. And what I've discovered is that if you have a strong enough reason why you want to do something, right, that, that is, why do I want to become an excellent speaker? Why do I want to overcome this thing of not being able to say what I want to say when I want to say it? Why? So it's not a matter of that I want to overcome it. You know, I really need to become a better speaker or I really need to lose weight or I really want to start this business or do that or do this. It's not a matter of that you want to do it. It's why you want to do it. And what I want to submit to you is that when you know why you want to do something and when you know that you're called to do that, that is, when you're called to do something, you feel drawn, you feel attracted, you feel like you can't do anything except this, that you'll never really be happy and fulfilled unless you're doing this thing, whatever it is, whatever it might be. And it can change over the course of your life. But you know this is something you are called to do. When you have a sense of what that is and you have a sense that in fact you are called to do something, you will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to fulfill that calling. Let me say that again. When you know you're called to do something and you know that your happiness and your fulfillment and even your success in life is dependent on you doing that thing, whatever it is, then you will do whatever you need to do for as long as you need to do it until you begin to fulfill that calling. So if it's going to take you three months or four months or six months or a year or two years to go through the stuff that you need to go through to position yourself to respond to that calling, then you're going to go through the three months, the four months, the six months, the year, the two years so that you can answer, you can respond to that calling. Let me just give you an example. Let's just say you're called to be uh, a teacher, a school teacher, whatever it might be, or a counselor. And let's say that there's something preventing you. Maybe it's a lack of education, it's a lack of opportunity, maybe you have a family and kids, 
or maybe you don't have the money, maybe it's because you stutter, maybe you have a fear of public speaking, whatever it might be, whatever the obstacles are. But you just have this sense that this is something you want to do, it's something that you've had a taste of and you see, you know that, you know what, I could do this really well. I feel like this is a service that I can give back to my community or to the world. And I, and I really believe I'm called to do this. But I have all these obstacles. And every time I try to do it, something happens that pulls me back. It's a setback. It's a reversal. So maybe I'm not really called to do this. Has that ever happened to anyone out there listening? Well, if it has, I want you to follow this series. I want you to follow this series because I'm going to be sharing with you seven lessons from the life of Joseph that will help give you perhaps a new perspective of why things may be happening to you. A new perspective on some very specific things that you can do so that you are able to respond to your calling. Okay. Now who is Joseph? Well, Joseph is a, a character in the, in the Bible. Um, what we as Christians call the Old Testament of the Bible. And this is a story that everyone can identify with in one way or another. It doesn't matter if you're Muslim, if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, Buddhist, whatever. This is a story that I believe you can identify with. And I want you to follow this story because there are some specific lessons that more than likely you have gone through right, or that you are going through now. And you might not see them as lessons, you might just see them as, why in the heck is this happening to me? But when we change our perspective and we see it as a lesson that is something that we can learn from, something that we can gain wisdom and experience and knowledge from, something, now watch this, that can help us to move forward, something that will reposition us for success, then it changes everything. So. The title of the series is called The Joseph Factor. It's called The Joseph Factor. And as I said, I'm going to be sharing with you seven lessons, right? Seven lessons. And what The Joseph Factor is really all about is how everything that's happening to you, right, if you see it from the right perspective and if you respond to it in a certain way, let me give you seven ways in these seven lessons that you can respond. What's going to happen is the Joseph Factor is going to help you see how you're being repositioned, repos repositioned for, now look at this, for greater power, for greater authority, and for greater service. Now, when I say power and authority, I'm not talking about you being in charge of someone and I've, I've got the power and I'm authority over you. What I'm talking about is you being in a position of greater influence, right? In a position where your finances are better and now you have the ability or the power to do some of the things that you wanted to do to help people to invest, to do whatever greater authority, where when someone listens to you, when someone hears you, when you're counseling, when you're coaching, when you're leading them, whatever it is, they say, this person knows what they're talking about. I believe them, right? They have this sense of authority. They, they know what they're talking about, okay? I trust them and I'm going to follow them. And a greater position of service, where you are adding value to the lives of others. The, the lives of those in your family, in your neighborhood, in your city, and in the world. With technology, we can add value to people all around the world just like that. It's very easy, right? Years and years ago, it used to be a lot harder, but now it's very easy. So the Joseph Factor is going to show you how, in fact, if you respond correctly, you, in fact, are being repositioned for greater power, greater authority, and greater service. And this is what it's all about, for greater service. That's why we're all here. Ultimately, we're all here to somehow, and watch this, make the lives of others, make this world, in fact, 
better than what it was before we got here. So when you and I leave this world, and as you and I pass through this world, and as we touch the lives of others, we want those lives, we want those companies, the neighborhoods, the families, this world in fact, to be even just a little better than what it was before we came on board. Does that make sense? So I want you to think about this, because this is going to be a very powerful series, and I want you to follow it, and I want you to share this with your friends and with your family, because I believe that you're going to be inspired, and I believe you're going to be instructed, and I believe that you're going to be motivated to see your life from a different perspective and to answer your calling. I know some of you are asking, what, what exactly do you mean by calling? I kind of have an idea what it is, but explain that to me. And I'm going to be sharing that with you more than likely in the very next video. What does it mean by calling? And then we're going to move into the seven lessons from the life of Joseph and how you can apply them to your own life. My name is Michael Williams, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I just want to ask you to please share this video with others and follow this series and share this series with others. Because I believe it can not only change your life, but that it can help you change the lives of others okay, through your service. I'll see you in the next video.